Uh, common English Bible. It's one I'm kind of grooving on lately. So it's Mark, cha- Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, and we are starting in verse 23. Jesus had just been talking about old wine and new wineskins. And then it says, Jesus went through the wheat fields on the Sabbath. As the, disciple, as the disciples made their way, they were picking the heads of wheat. And the Pharisees said to Jesus, look, why are they breaking the Sabbath law? And he said to them, haven't you ever read what David did when he was in need, when he and those with him were hungry? During the time when Abiathar was high priest, David went into God's house and ate the bread of the presence, which only the priests were allowed to eat. He also gave bread to those who were with him. And then Jesus said, the Sabbath was created for humans. Humans weren't created for the Sabbath. This is why the human one is Lord even over the Sabbath. Jesus returned to the synagogue, and a man with a withered hand was there, wanting to bring charges against Jesus. They were watching Jesus closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. And he said to the man with the withered hand, step up where people can see you. And then Jesus said to them, Is it legal on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill life? But they said nothing. Looking around at them with anger, deeply grieved at their unyielding hearts, Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. So he did, and his hand was made healthy. At that, the Pharisees got together with the supporters of Herod to plan how to destroy Jesus. Our second reading is from Psalm 139. We'll read portions 1 through 6 and 13 to 18. O Lord, you have examined me. You know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. Even from far away, you comprehend my plans. You study my traveling and resting. You are thoroughly familiar with all of my ways. There isn't a word on my tongue, Lord, that you don't already know completely. You surround me, front and back. You put your hand on me. That kind of knowledge is too much for me. It's so high above me that I can't reach it. And then jumping down to 13. You are the one who created my innermost parts. You knit me together while I was still in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you that I was marvelously set apart. Your works are wonderful. I know that very well. My bones weren't hidden from you when I was being put together in a secret place, when I was being woven together in the deep parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my embryo, and on your scroll every day was written that was being formed for me before any one of them had yet happened. God, your plans are incomprehensible to me. Their total number is countless. If I tried to count them, they outnumber grains of sand. If I came to the very end, I'd still be with you. The word of the Lord. You are the one who created my innermost parts. The word that is translated as innermost parts is kidneys in a poetic way and also with the biological sensibilities of the day, it was understood that the center of human emotion was found in like the bowels, heart, lungs, liver, kidneys. We might say in our gut, right? So if you want to be a biblical poet, you use the word kidneys. And today, right, integrated medicine or folks that are trying to make mind and body connections, they associate decision-making with our kidneys. So on a purely physical level, our kidneys don't just remove waste and drugs from our blood stream. They balance our fluids. They regulate the hormones that regulate blood pressure. They produce an active form of vitamin D. They control the production of red blood cells. They balance the salt, potassium, and acid in our bodies. It's unbelievable to me that we have an organ that does more than just filter out the bad, but then tells our bodies how to replenish the good. And therein concludes all that I know about the kidneys. (laughs) So I will turn my attention back to being a pastor and ask, 
What do we now hear when we read the words of the psalmist, you are the one who created my kidneys? It was you, God, who gave us a filtering system. It was you, God, who in our innermost parts, deep within our skeletal system, you gave us not one, but two small bean-sized pockets with the capacity to take in life, filter it, and discard that which no longer serves us. It was you, God, who gave us not just the ability to filter the bad, but to tell us how to replenish the good. It was you, God, who gave our bodies the wisdom to instruct us how to be balanced. It was you, God, who has given us the ability to discern an overall pattern from a mass of details. It was you, God, who wanted us to understand a bigger narrative, even while we take in so much detail. We do, right? We take in a lot of detail. The daily news cycle, the constant notification bings, bings, bings from our devices, the stresses that we live with kind of personally, relationally, professionally, and even here at church, we've experienced some stress. Our kidneys are busy. Each day, the information we consume gets more toxic, and we're desperate to understand a bigger narrative to make sense of all of our world and our neighborhoods and our families and our hurt. Come on, kidneys, try to keep up. Filter, 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 toxins are coming in. I think the kidney connection might have run its course in this sermon. (laughs) But this wish to understand a bigger or a broader narrative, to place ourselves in a bigger story perhaps, instead of living the small narratives of our lives each day, I think that's what was happening with Jesus and his relationship with the Pharisees. The Pharisees, and they get a bad name because... That might have been us if they were writing the Bible today. The Pharisees and Jesus, for that matter, were living in a time of unrest. Their lives were uncertain, and it was risky. And Jesus was not helping the matter. He was making the religious establishment uncertain. He was risking what they had always known to be right or wrong. He was interpreting the data, the law, differently. Jesus and his friends break the Sabbath by picking and presumably eating the head of the wheat in a field. And then Jesus broke the Sabbath again by healing a man's hand. And then Jesus turns to the the law keepers and says, well, which is wrong? What's really at stake here when I heal on the Sabbath? Tell me, how do you understand not just the letter of the law, but the spirit of the law? of the law. Jesus could very well have had this psalm in his mind when he was saying that to them. When he was thinking about filtering the toxins and then attempting to find balance. For it was God who created our inmost parts. God gave us this fantastic ability to filter, to let the dust settle and then listen again and then filter one more time. God gave us the ability to not react, but to respond if we slow down. And we've heard this our whole lives, right? We can take in the toxins, but we don't have to keep them as toxins. We can filter out that which doesn't serve us anymore, and then we can balance and take in things that do serve us. Jesus was doing that when he says the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. He was discerning the spirit of the law from the letter of the law. Now, I have compassion for the Pharisees. They were under a lot of stress. Jesus was challenging them directly. When we're under stress like that, our tendency is to kind of circle the wagons, right? To double down, to put some clear boundaries up, find what is right and what is wrong. We tend to, when we're under stress like that, get a little bit more judgmental. We see things a little bit more black and white. We look for one to blame, right? We try to get rid of the stress. We try to figure out how to balance. 
that makes us feel safe, perhaps even, because we've somehow kept the toxins out. We've created walls. But keeping the toxins out is not the same thing as filtering them. Filtering takes time, it takes patience, it takes grace, it takes compassion and humility and courage. Keeping a strict law is much easier than keeping the spirit of the law. So as we move into these summer months, I've been praying for us as a community. And obviously, this sermon works for us on a daily basis, right? We all take in and try to filter and try to remain balanced. And, and that's hard, really hard to do on an individual level. And as a community, though, I feel like we've kind of been barraged with a lot for a year and a half. And I'm looking forward to the dust settling and filtering again and listening to the Holy Spirit, right? And letting our guts filter things so that we have a better understanding of what the narrative of life is. What is it that God sees? How does God see our world? I believe that as the reactivity dies down, we will begin to filter together what's toxic and what's healing. I believe that we'll find time to sit with one another like a little bit more relaxed to offer spaces of listening and healing and talking to one another. I believe we'll understand what Jesus was saying when he said that God didn't make the Sabbath for man. Wait, God made the Sabbath for man, not man for the Sabbath. <laughs> I believe we will heal personally, whatever you're going through, right? We do heal. But keeping the toxins at bay is not how you heal. And that's a lot of work, right? Allowing them to come in, filter. God gave us this ability to filter. Filter again. God gave us the ability to figure out what's the good stuff. Let's put some good stuff in. I believe God heals. I believe God wants to heal, just like Jesus healed that man's hand. Amen. As you are able, let's stand and affirm our faith together. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The, the Spirit, Spirit sets, sets us free, free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor. The, the Spirit binds us together with all believers in the one body, body of Christ, Christ the, church. the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles engages, engages us, us, claims us, feeds us, and calls us. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive, we strive to, to serve, serve Christ in our daily tasks and, and to live, live holy and joyful, and joyful lives. lives. Let's remain standing and sing.